Superintendent of Public Instruction Tom Horn joined us earlier. I, I'm going to preface this because I think a lot of people are not understanding um, why I get so animated and why others are. So I will um, let me explain. Tom Horn, the superintendent, had written an email and to the districts around the state of Arizona suggesting, because as he said in the interview, he doesn't have the power to tell them what to do, but he made a suggestion that they remove UNICEF and Amnesty International from the campuses. There were some that were saying it might be illegal, and he said that's not true, because if that were true, we'd have to let the Klan or neo-Nazis have a club on campus. And the reason why is the anti-Semitic, as he called it, and I don't, maybe he didn't use the word propaganda, but I will, that it is one-sided propaganda on impressionable young people. And he didn't think it was wise. He didn't think it was accurate. And so he warned the districts and said, I think you should remove this these presentations from schools because Jewish students are very uncomfortable and Jewish students feel as if they're in danger because now negative things are being said about them that just are not true. So I want, that's that's the interview. You're going to hear a little bit of what Tom Horn had to say in a moment in the interview. I'd love for you to go and listen to the whole thing. It'll be on the podcast at ktar.com. But I want you to, again, I, I've, I've uh, asked people to contemplate this. Substitute the word Jew in what I'm talking about with black. It would never be tolerated. If there was a specifically anti-black uh, attitude. If an organization went into the classrooms and blamed, pick something, uh, whatever it could be, in our community, our community, and blamed it specifically on black people, well, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't ever say a race of people are responsible for this. And that is what is happening to Jews around the world. Jews are endangered because the Jews are being attacked. As a group, that's what's being said. Hamas and Hezbollah specifically, but you've got the Iranian involvement and other groups, Pidge in, in Gaza. These organizations want to kill Jews. That's what they have set out to do. The leader of Hamas has asked lone wolf um, attackers to rise up around the world. And does that mean they're going to spe specifically target Jews? Yes. But does that mean they're going to target Americans because our president and because others fully support Israel and their right to exist and their right to defend themselves? Absolutely. But when it comes to this kind of propaganda, and I want you to, I want to be very clear, um, we would not allow, I can't imagine that ASU, even on a college campus, would allow a Klan club. If the Klan said that they wanted to set up a club, if there was a kid that went into and said, I want to find a teacher that will be a sponsor and I want to start a white supremacy club because I think black people are the problem in our society or we live in Arizona with a very large Hispanic population. I think uh, his, the Hispanic population is going to be the demise of Arizona. I don't believe that, that they sh I believe they are the problem in our society. They would never, in, a, in an instant, it would be over with. It would never happen. Again, I talked about this earlier. You know, um, the idea that uh, a young kid who put uh, eye black on, but he put it on down his face. If you've ever seen Ray Lewis and you've seen others, the other professional players, how they'll use eye black and they'll do a design on their face with it. It would be like somebody going out hunting and using grease to camouflage themselves, but they use a lot of black grease to camouflage themselves and say that's blackface. That's what this young person, because he played at a predominantly black school, this kid, I think he was 14 years old, was thrown off the athletics, all of athletic participation because of that. That's how sensitive we are to racism in this country. And yet you've got organizations like UNICEF and Amnesty International that are propagandizing an anti-Jew agenda. And that's what uh, uh, the superintendent said. This is it, why he why he says we have to put a stop to this. We don't want to be like Germany in the 1930s, where the Nazis focused on young people because they were impressionable, and and those young people ended up being the most fervent Nazis. I asked him, "Is it is it a form of racism?" It's creating hatred against Jewish people, and it's completely unbalanced. 
And he says these organizations, he talks about UNICEF and Amnesty International being great organizations at one time. Amnesty International and UNICEF used to be great organizations. But Amnesty International was taken over by the hard left some years ago. And UNICEF is under the thumb of the United Nations, which is now dominated by authoritarian countries. And, you know, they chose Iran to be the head of human rights. So we're going to talk it more at greater lengths uh, before the show goes on. As a matter of fact, in a few moments specifically about Israel, we're going to update what's happened and we're going to talk. So I don't want to get specifics into what's happening in the war, but this is about our attitudes in America. This is the hypocrisy to me of the of the cancel culture is that the cancel culture will not tolerate racism. They will not tolerate, uh, again, I talked about pronouns. They're not going to tolerate pronouns, uh, b- misuse of pronouns. They're not going to tolerate it. They want It's hate speech. This is the epitome of hate speech. Jews are being threatened around the world. They're being threatened on college campuses. Uh, college students, uh, you know, they've got members of faculty in this propagandizing of the Jews and Jewish students, they're filing lawsuits because the students are feeling unsafe on college campuses. So again, why would we tolerate it in our public schools? The superintendent doesn't have the power to tell the schools they cannot do it, but he can make the suggestion that they shouldn't do it, that they shouldn't allow it. And I'm anxious to see how districts respond. And I would say to any of you that have children in the school system, I would be asking the administration of my school if my child is going to be subjected to a presentation by either one of these organizations. I'd find out what the school stance is and who they are allowing to speak about this topic. I think it would be interesting to find that out. 